the mind of God to us who believe. Jeremiah, it says, the word, Jeremiah chapter 2, he said, the word of the Lord came to me. Go and proclaim in the hearing of Jerusalem. The word of the Lord came to me. Go and proclaim in the hearing of Jerusalem. This is what the Lord says. So we, we, we have a direction. We have God speaking into the minds of his servants. And that becomes the message. Becomes the message of the time, of the season that we're in, that you may be going through. And it says, in the same Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15. Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15. And it says concerning his people and those that he will send to them. He said, then I will give you shepherds after my own heart. Some might say teachers. We will lead you with knowledge and understanding. In those days, when your numbers have increased greatly in the land, the land declares the Lord. He said, I will give you shepherds after my own heart who will lead you with knowledge and understanding. You know, so in every season, God provides the knowledge and understanding that will take you forward. And he packages it and make it a word. Inspire it. And that's why we come up and we say, this is the theme for this conference. And I want to say to us that as we step into this, you need to meditate upon the theme. What do you want God to do in your life? And I want to assure you that it shall surely bring it to pass. The thing we speak in your life, the thing we manifest in your business, in your family, the theme of the conference we manifest in the name of Jesus. And so I kickstart this conference today. Which theme says breaking the limitations. Breaking the limitations. Hallelujah. Because we, we serve the limitless God. Limitless God. We serve the limitless God. A living God who is omnipotent, omniscience, and is revealed to us through the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray that in this conference, as men and women will minister to you, God shall be revealed to you in a new dimension. In the name of Jesus. No matter what the circumstances of life that you are going through. What is the state of your mind? The same book, the book of Malachi says in, in chapter 3 verse 6. It says, for I the Lord do not change. I the, the Lord do not change. Therefore you O sons of Jacob are not consumed. There are instances and circumstances consuming people, wearing them out. Situation holding them in bondage. But we are saying those limitations, those bondages that looks like limitations in your life or have put you in some kind of limitation or limited your life, it has to be broken. God is still God. That's why this theme is breaking the limitations. And so, our Father, we want to thank you this morning. We dedicate this conference to you once again. 
We thank you for the word that you have given concerning this year's conference. You know the states and affairs of each and every one. Both those who are here this morning, those who are yet to come, those who are watching. That your word says that we shall break the limitations. For this is the year of grace overflowing on every side. And so Lord God, we thank you for this word. We thank you for this, this theme of this conference. And wherever, Lord, your people are being limited, wherever they're suffering some kind of hindrances and restrictions, Father Lord, by your word in this conference, they shall be set loose. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Breaking the limitations. Now, in Joshua chapter 1, Joshua chapter 1, After the death or the passing of Moses, and the Lord appeared to Joshua because they were still in the journey to the promised land. And in verse 1, the Bible says, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, Son of noon, Moses, Moses' aid or Moses' assistance. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan into the land I'm about to give them. Into the land I'm about to give them to the Israelites. And it says in verse 3. I will give you every place where you set your foot. I will give you every place where you set your foot. As I promised to Moses, your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the heated country to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. And verse 5 says, No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. And it says in verse 3, Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people. He said you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Now, the word came to Joshua. And when you study the book of Joshua, there were several attempt of limitations but the word has been given to him and at every point of intimidation restriction and every point of hindrance God always speak to Joshua and so God is saying to you this morning that the limitation over your life and career shall be broken in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because the intention of God is to place every believer in the space of freedom and progress. It's to place us in the space of freedom and to make progress. To gain dominion. To gain dominion wherever we are located. Whichever industry that we find ourselves. We are to gain dominion. We are to have freedom. We are to have a voice even in, their, in our nations. Amen. And so in this instance, if we don't pray to break limitation, we may become complacent. Comfortable to the level where we are. Happy with a state of mediocrity. Happy to stay under that restrictions 
that is ungodly. We will be unable to express the gift and talents which are divinely given to us if we are not in that space of freedom and progress. Because where there is no progress, there is a level of limitations or there are limitations of different kinds. Because again, in this world, we, there is so much of unfair practices, unfair practices, prejudices, wickedness in high places. So certain limitation may not be what you see. Certain limitation may be the spirit behind the limitations. That's why if you read Ephesians chapter 6, it says the struggle that we go through is not with flesh, it's not with blood. The struggle we go through is with principalities, the spiritual darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. So, certain limitations that we see, there are spirit behind it. And we, if we don't learn to break the limitation and get to understand the spirit behind it, it will be oppression. Gift cannot be expressed. Talent cannot be expressed. Your career cannot blossom. It cannot be expressed. Your vision, your dreams will be lying within you. And you will pass that month where you are to deliver. You will pass the season where you are to deliver your vision and your dreams. Because the intention of God is to give us that space where we triumph. Where we make progress. And in this world, he equipped us with the knowledge and understanding to overcome the unfair practices even within the body of Christ there are limitations imposed by men. So this theme, breaking the limitation, is to help us to rise as eagles, to possess our possession in Christ Jesus, to regain the dominion which was given at the initial stage of creation. That's why Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 10, he said, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. That's what the devil has come to do. That's what the devil has come to do, to, to, to inject into people's life. He says, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. And he said, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Nothing missing, nothing broken. That you may have life and have it abundantly. Meaning that the things of life and godliness are consolidated in Christ Jesus. They are consolidated in Christ Jesus. And through his death on the cross, those things have been made available to us. For the Bible says in Galatians 3, verse 13 and 14, it says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. For curse is anyone who is hanged on the tree. And this that in order that the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles, he said that the blessing might come up, the blessing of the Spirit might come upon the Gentiles. In other words, we are not going to be limited by the curse of the law because the curse of the law remains the curse of the law because you cannot meet up with the law. You cannot meet up with what the society demands of you. But I'm saying to you, all has been released to you by the accomplished work of Christ Jesus. You just need to tap into it. 
Hallelujah. He said the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. He comes to steal, to steal your dream. He comes to steal, to kill your ideas. He comes to destroy, to destroy what you are building. But Jesus said, I have come to give it to you in abundance. I have come that you may recover. I have come to give you restoration. I have come to give you a new beginning in the name of Jesus. So if there are things missing in your testimony, if there are things missing in your testimonies or in your story, there may be limitations and it has to be broken in the name of Jesus. And I pray that in this conference, those things that look like a limitation in your life, they shall be broken. The barriers shall be broken. Indrances shall be removed in the name of Jesus. Favor will flow upon our lives. He said the time to favor Zion has come. Praise God. So let's understand what limitation is. As you should do, limitation is a key word. And breaking it is also a key word. But let's, let's look at limitation. Limitation is from the word limit. Limitation means, you know, restrictions. It means restrictions. Limitation is also statutory restrictions. Statutory barriers and embargoes which limits your potential, limit how far you should go, how far you can expand. Those are limitations. It's, they are restrictions. They are strategic oppressions in some cases. Certain restrictions may be good, but we're talking about restrictions which oppresses your dream. Restrictions which oppresses your idea. They become limitations. You cannot implement. You cannot get to the next level you want to get to. You cannot even go to where you want to get to. You cannot even get what you need to bring them to fulfillment. We're talking about limitations. And this is what we want to break in this conference. So we must understand what limitation is. At times, limitations causes a delay. Limitations causes delay. Statutory policies, they can delay certain things in your life. And these are limitations. There are embargoes that will limit you physically and spiritually. They are limitations. And we want, we want to talk in a spiritual perspective of limitation. The spiritual perspective of limitation is a prevailing circumstances that places a limitation or an embargo on how far you can move, how far you can make a progress, how far you can achieve anything in your life. It's a prevailing circumstances. That's what this limitation is. I'm not saying you're not making it. I'm not saying you're not doing well. But I know right inside of you, there are things that you fall short. And perhaps you, you are not where you want to be. It's a limitation. And our eyes must be opened. That's why I'm saying that if you do not realize it, you may be incomplacent. Complacent is to feel cool where you are, not bother to move from where you are. Praise the name of the Lord. And so the, the message is to quicken you to possess your possessions in Christ Jesus. To announce to you that there is more for you than what you are seeing or what you have seen. 
that is so far that you can go with the career that you are building up or the ministry that you are building, there is so much for it. And, and I want to tell someone that there is, there is a fullness of life that is ahead of you. But you may be experiencing things that looks as if you have no chance tomorrow. That's why I'm saying we're breaking the limitation. Hallelujah. So understanding the word limitation in spiritual terms, they are a chain, a chain around your dreams and vision. It's like you're having a chain around your dream of life. You're moving nowhere. Joseph experienced that when they threw him into the pit. And they thought that should be the end of his dream. That should be a limitation for him to dream more. I want to tell you someone, you may be in the pit today, you can still dream. You can still dream. You may be unemployed today, you can still dream. You may be single today, you can still dream. You may be single today, you can still dream. That means you can dream of the woman you want to marry. You can dream of the man you want to marry. Hallelujah. Let's give Jesus a clap offering. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, so limitation is, is, is a situation where your career and business are imprisoned. Yet you have been redeemed from the course of the law. As we read according to Galatians. So what remains is to break those limitations. Is to pray yourself out of those limitations. Out of that confinement. You need to break yourself out. As you sense it by the Spirit of God. You want me to give you one testimony? <laughs> Several years ago, I was pursuing education to make me a teacher. I didn't have a prophet. I didn't even know the word very well. But the Holy Spirit said to me, you are not to be a teacher of schools. Yeah. It was the Holy Spirit. I wasn't a pastor. I was just one of those boys in the church. He said, you are not to be a teacher. Amen. You may say, but you are a teacher now. I'm a teacher of the word. I'm a teacher of the world. So that diploma, that degree was not a waste. But he said, you are not. And I said, eh. Yeah. And I'll prove how. I'll tell you some other time how I got to understand. So what I'm trying to say is that you can be in confinement. You can be in limitation. It takes the spirit of God to release you out of the limitation. And that's why you have to be in his presence. You have to be in his presence. Hallelujah. You may be an attorney, you may be a lawyer, you may still be struggling. I've seen lawyers that are struggling. I've seen engineers who don't know what they are doing. Praise the name of the Lord. So what remains is for us to, to break and to pray out of that limitation when you sense it. By the word of God. So it takes the mirror of the word to see where you belong. It takes the mirror of the word to see where you belong. That's why you need to hear the word of God. That's why you need to hear the word of God. Praise God. And for you, if you don't know what you are, where you are limited, if you don't know that you are in limitation, there is another thing for you. There is the predestined plan of God that will raise helper to lose you to your destiny. That's how God works. That's how God works. That's God. If you don't even know that you are in limitation, there is the predestined plan of God that will come to work that will raise your helpers. Mm. They will lose you from that hold, from that limitation, and set you free to destiny. 
The Bible says about Joseph in Psalm 105. It said, a time came that he sent one of them to Egypt. He was sold as a slave and he was put in chains. And then he was put into prison until his word came to pass and the word of the Lord tested him. And he said the king of the nation sent for him and made him a ruler over his people. You get what I'm saying? That's the, that's the revelation of Samus. He said there came a time that his word came to pass and the word of God attested him. The king of the people called him, sent for him, and made him a ruler over the people and over all his possessions. I said, when there's a predestined plan of God for your life, wherever the enemy has limited you, God will send the helper. Amen. Hallelujah. And we can say Pharaoh was a hard man. It was Pharaoh who did not know those descendants. But that Pharaoh sent for Joseph. When the word of Joseph came to pass, that's what the psalmist was talking about. The word he said to the cupbearer, you remember? Something needs to work for you when your destiny is to move forward. When you are to be broken loose from, a death, from that limitation, something must come to pass for you. That was what happened to, to Joseph. When the time came. And I'm saying to someone, the time has come. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, we're saying breaking the limitations. How do we start to break this limitation? If you have not received Christ as your Lord and Savior, that is the first requirement in this perspective, in our world of Christianity, in our lifestyle of Christianity. You know, you, you must receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You may have been coming to church or you have been going to church, look, you, you need to receive him as your Lord and Savior. Because in him is everything. Nothing was made without him. And everything that was made was made with his knowledge. And so is your destiny before the foundations of this world. You have been predestined in him. You received the adoption as sons of God through the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, for you to break the limitation or to you, for you to be loosened from, from, from the confinement that you think life may have put you, you need to receive him as your Lord and Savior. You need to receive him. It's the first case that you need to. And that is, you know, becoming a born again, to be born again in your spirit. It's not negotiable. It's not negotiable. You need to be born again in your spirit. When I'm talking about being born again, being born again in your spirit. Your heart is sanctified. Your heart is sanctified. You release your life unto him. The Bible says in you we live, in him we have our being. You need to submit your life to Christ Jesus. Christianity is not a part-time. It's a lifestyle. It's not a part-time. It's a lifestyle. So this is what I can tell you. For you to break out of that limitation, for you to break out of that stronghold, you need the Lord Jesus Christ. You need him. And I will invite you to receive him today. Either you are seated before me or you are watching, you need to receive him. As we go into this conference, you know, you need to be prepared the platform for you to triumph over limitations of life is Christ Jesus. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Praise the name of the Lord. John chapter 15 verse 4. Gospel of John chapter 15. You need Christ in your life. You need Christ in your life. This is the time you cannot afford to waste time anymore. You cannot afford to stay in that condition anymore. You need to receive him. 
And Jesus says, I'll take you from at verse 4, John chapter 15. He said, remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Unless you abide in me, can you, have, can you, can you bear fruit? Hallelujah. This is the word of God. This is the word of God. Christ is everything to us. And we are sharing it with you this morning. There's nothing you want to break that you can break in your flesh. You have to trust God and trust in him that he has sent. They trust in him that he has sent, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. <coughs> Again, you need faith. As you receive him, you need to build up yourself in faith. You need to build up your faith, yourself in faith. You build yourself in faith by the word of God. And when you continue to dwell in this word of God, your faith continues to increase. You don't live in fear of what you are going through. You live with hope of what you are going to see in the future. <clears throat> Amen. In Hebrews chapter 6, praise God. Now, the letter of Hebrew, if you believe Paul wrote it, I believe Paul wrote it. <coughs> verse 9, Hebrew 6, verse 9, he said, Even though we speak like this, dear friends, we are convinced of better things in your case. The things which, the things that have to do with salvation. He said, the things that have to do with salvation, the things that have to do with you becoming a born again, receiving the Lord Jesus Christ into your life. He said, the things that have to do with salvation, for God is not unjust. He will not forget your work. And the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and to continue to help them. And we want each of you to show this same diligence to the very end. So that's why I said, you know, being born again, being Christian is not a part-time. <laughs> because some people want to come today, become born again today, and they want to see things moving at their own space. No. But God will not forget you. So it says here, we want each of you to show the same diligence to the end so that what you hope for may be truly realized. That's God. We do not want you to become lazy, but to, to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. Hallelujah. And so we need to to, to see the word of God as a pointer to the ways of God. We need to see the word of God as a pointer to the ways of God. And so, be, receiving the Lord as your, the, the Jesus as your Lord and Savior is number one. Dwelling in the word is abiding in him. You will bear fruit. I say you will bear fruit. You will exceed your limitations. In the name of Jesus. That, that's our God. Now, how do we break this limitation? The one I want to focus on and finish today is breaking the limitation of your mental capacity. Breaking the limitation of your mental capacity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's one point I want to just share with you. And I believe our other speakers, God will speak through them. 
Now, breaking the limitation of mental capacity, the, the, the mental capacity literally, literally describes your mental ability. It describes your reasoning quotient to cope in time of challenges. The mental capacity also may be the absence of divine wisdom, knowledge for application. So sometimes when, we, when our mental capacity is so low, our reasoning with the word of God is so low, we are limited. But when we can break through the wrong thoughts, we can break limitations. When we can break through the thought of fear, the thought of failure, you can break through limitations. So mental capacity that is a limitation must have to be broken. Because mental capacity can put you in confinement. It can put you, put you in a form of defeat and a sense of failure. But if you gain a higher understanding to apply in season of your life, in season of your career, in season of your ministry and businesses, you can break the limitations. But your thought must be set right. Your thought must be set right. Hallelujah. So in this instance, you can break the limitation of your mentality as you reason with the word of God. The book of Isaiah says somewhere, say, let us reason together. If you can reason with the word of God, you can break limitations. Your mentality must be reset. Must be reset. This world is unfair, I can tell you. Your mentality must be reset. You are a child of God. You are a child of God. You can break the limitations. And so as you reason with the word, you are able to believe. You are able to increase in faith. You are able to fight the fight of faith. To fight the battles of life. To see your life by the mirror of the word, as I mentioned earlier. But you need to upgrade your mental ability by the word of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Isaiah 55, this is the word of God for someone this morning. Isaiah 55, the Lord revealed there through his prophet, his ways, he says, are not our ways. Hallelujah. Let us look at that. He says in Isaiah 59, I mean 55, let me take it a bit early from verse 5. He says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he's near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord. Let them turn to the Lord. And he will have mercy on them. He said he will have mercy on them. And to our God for he will freely pardon. He will freely pardon. Verse 8 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. The only thing, I've said it before, that will bring your thought closer to God's thought is the word of God. Is the word of God that you receive. Is the word of God that you believe. And that's how you begin to change your mental capacity to it. That's why you go beyond certain reasoning that is not of God. You now begin to think as God thinks about you. You need to break that mental capacity that is putting you below the word of God. Below the expectation for your life. That's how you break limitations. That's how you can break poverty. That's, why you, that's how you can break, you know, 
things that, that, that looks as if there is nowhere to go, you can break those boundaries or those barriers. And so God revealed in his word for us here to, to understand that his ways are not our ways, his thoughts are not our thoughts. And he says, metaphorically, he said, just as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it to bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. He says, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty but will accomplish what I desire and achieve and the purpose for which I sent it. God has sent his word that has a purpose in your life. You need to receive it. You need to believe it. Praise the name of the Lord. And the word, he said it will not return to him just as the rain which came from heaven will not return to heaven. It has to water something. The word of God has come to water your life. The word of God has come to water your career. It has come to water your marriage, to water your entire family. You need to receive it. And you will see the harvest. You need to receive it. You need to receive it. In the name of Jesus, your mental capacity will increase. You can look right and left. You will see the word of God. You will release the word of God. In the name of Jesus. When fear comes, you will release the word of faith. When disappointment comes, you will proclaim another appointment. This is the mental capacity that needs to be broken. If it's less and below the expectation of what God wants for your life. Don't stay in defeat. In Jeremiah 29, Jeremiah chapter 29, the word of the Lord speaks to us and says from verse 10, that this is what the Lord says, when 70 years are completed for Babylon, Babylon to them then was exile. Babylon then was a time of oppression. No wages, they were used. Babylon was a place of their nakedness, oppression. He says, when these years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and I will fulfill my good promise to you to bring you back to this place, the place of promise. For I know the plans I have for you. This is the word of somebody who feels his life is limited to where he is. This is the word of the Lord to someone who is living like is in Babylon. God says, those years will come to an end and I will bring my word to pass I will bring my thoughts concerning you to bring, to bring them to pass he said for the plans I have for you declares the Lord he said plans to prosper you and not to harm you praise the name of the Lord he said it's, it's a plan to prosper you not to harm you some limitations they are harming our careers some limitation and restriction, they harm, they injure our potentials. But God says that his word is coming to be fulfilled in your life. And you need to get this right into your mental faculty that God is coming for me. The word of God will be fulfilled in my life. He said, believe the Lord, you shall be established. Believe his prophet, you shall succeed. That's the word of God. And that's where you, you must put your thinking. Because for so many that are coming to church and going back up to church, coming back to the church, some of them are working in defeat. They are thinking of failure. And that has set them you know, into a kind of a level where they cannot break through. 
And that's why I'm saying you need, you need, you can only break, break this limitation by breaking that mental capacity. You need to. You need to break through it. There's a limitation that your thoughts are set over you. So you need to break that limitation of that mental, that, that mental capacity. Praise God. And so God here is showing us his plan. Revealing his plan to you. And said, I have a plan for you. I have a plan for you. No matter what has put you in a kind of a cage. Circumstances, prevailing circumstances that is really not working to your good. But God is reminding you and putting it into your mind that I've got a plan for you which is about to be launched. Praise God. So, he said this plan to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. That's the plan of God. And you must hold that. It must become your, your, your reasoning capacity. Must become your reasoning capacity. Must become your knowledge. So that you can break through the limitations and embargo that is before you. And as you abide in Christ, your thought becomes cleansed by the Holy Spirit. Fear will disappear in the name of Jesus. He, he, he even said in John chapter 15, verse 3, he said, the words that I've spoken over you have cleansed you. He said, they have cleansed you. So you need to develop that, 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 that reasoning level to, to increase that capacity that you have. The capacity of your thoughts must be increased, enlarged, so that at every wrong thought, you have the right word to say. That's what it is. That's what it is. And this is how you can end this year with so much of breakthroughs that you have never seen. That's how you can end this year in this grace that is overflowing in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. It says in John 14, verse 11, 12, he said, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Otherwise, believe because of the works themselves. Believe because of the works themselves. The works themselves can be, can be seen among us, among in your community. What God is doing in people's life. What God is doing in other people's life. That's why we share testimonies. That is where, that's why we share testimonies. And he says, truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me and the works that I do, he will do also and greater works. And greater works than these he will do. He said, because I go to the Father. So what I'm saying to you is that you need to see what God is doing around you. Celebrate your friends. Celebrate those who are ahead of you. Honor them. It's what God is doing in their lives. That puts your thoughts right with the thought of God for your life. Praise the name of the Lord. And so we are saying here that we, 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 if our mental capacity is, is below what the word of God is saying, we may first of all have to break that limitation. We have to break that limitation. We have to rise like eagles. You know, because you don't need to flirt with everybody for connection to survive. You don't need to. You need to set your thought right. You need to set your thought right. You don't need to. Isaiah 48, 17 also says, he said, the Lord, the only one of Israel, he said, he teaches you to profit it teaches you to profit. And lighten your path. Lighten your path. So you, you, you need to break, first of all, that limitation that is set by your thoughts level. 
And this is done by the impartation of the Holy Spirit. Just as we are doing, just as you are going to see in this conference, I believe that men that are coming, the women that are coming, they are going to speak, they are going to impart you by the word of the Spirit. Hallelujah. By the word of the Spirit. You know, to, 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 to take you into higher level mental capacity so that you can break those limitations, so that you can be wise in season, so that you can overcome the unfair restrictions that is pressing down your potentials. And this is what we want to achieve because there are also institutional limitations. Institutional limitations. There are. There are institutional limitations by the reason of their restrictions and policies. You need the favor of God to break through. And you must believe that you are a child of God. Your case can be different. Your case can be different. In the midst of restriction, your case can be different. In the name of Jesus. No matter what the restrictions, what the policies are saying, you are a child of God. There is something special about you. You must get it right in your thinking. Don't think, don't think like a defeated person. Hallelujah. Don't think like a defeated person. You need to sense the wave of the Spirit of God. And that's what we are in right now. God is speaking to us. God is speaking to us. And we need, we need to be alert. We need to be alive. We need to be excited. We need to be enthusiastic. We need to be enthusiastic with the world, with the wave of the Spirit. And we begin to step into our God-ordained territories, God-ordained businesses, God-ordained careers. You know, the opportunities that are there in the marketplace will not, will not miss you because God is directing you. And you will serve God with ease. You will serve him passionately in the name of Jesus. So as I want to close here, I wanted to see how do we begin to increase the level of our thought in line with the thought of God. First Corinthians chapter 2. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen and amen. Breaking the limitations. Hallelujah. I believe more word will be coming around this, but this is what God wants me to share with you. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I'll take it from verse 11. It says, For who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. What we have received is not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God. But the Spirit which is from God, which includes the divine wisdom. So that we may understand what God has freely given us. Verse 13, this is what we speak, not in words taught us by human wisdom, but in words taught by the Spirit, explaining spiritual realities with Spirit-taught words. The person without the Spirit does not accept the things that, came, that come from the Spirit of God but consider them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. They are discerned only through the Spirit. Amen. And so we, we need the impartation of the Spirit of God, of the Word of Spirit, for us to come in alignment with the thought of God for our life. And that is how we can step in into a higher level of mental capacity as children of God. 
That is how you will not walk in defeat. You will walk in victory. In the name of Jesus. And so this is how you can break whatever limitation that you are seeing around yourself. The things that you are seeing right now, you need to break that mental capacity and get to a higher level with the thought of God. And you can see the future becoming more brighter and brighter. Hallelujah. And I pray that your future shall be declared open today in the name of Jesus. By this conference, I pray whatever that has limited you, limited your potential, that limitation shall be removed in the name of Jesus. There are helpers waiting for you. There are helpers waiting to speak you, speak you into your directions in life. Hallelujah. That's what I will talk about next time. That's how you can break that mental status that you have, that mental capacity that you think you have. That's how you can break it. And you will get out of the limitations because the wrong thoughts will be sending you a wrong picture. I say wrong thoughts will send to you a wrong picture. In the name of Jesus, you will break through. In Jesus' name. Let's put our hands together. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. We receive your word this morning. We prepare, we prepare our hearts concerning this conference, Lord. The breaking of limitations in our life. We receive you as our Lord and Savior. We receive you, Lord God. We abide in you. That we may bear fruit. That we may manifest the benefit of redemption. The works that you have accomplished for us. In the name of Jesus. Lord Almighty, we rise with you. We rise as eagles this morning. To possess our possession. To stand in the place of our calling. To stand in the place, O oh Lord God, where we will make influence. The place of our dominion. In the name of Jesus. For the Bible says, for this reason Christ has come to set us free so that we do not remain in the yoke of slavery. Father mighty God, we thank you for the freedom in Christ Jesus. Freedom in Christ Jesus. No more limitation in our life. No more limitation in our thinking. No more defeat thinking. In the name of Jesus, we are thinking of victory in Christ Jesus. Victory in Christ Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray for every family that may be living in any confinement, any family that may be in any form of restriction, any family that may be living in form of oppression. Father, today, let them break through. Let them break through. Let them break through. In the name of Jesus, expand their reasoning quotient. Expand their thought in line with your thoughts. For your thoughts towards them is good. For your thought to them towards them is good. It's for the future. It's for hope. Father, we thank you today for your word. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we glorify your name. Thank you for favor. Favor that shall break loose someone from limitations. Favor that will come upon someone's career so that their joy may be full. In the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for that favor. We pray for that favor. To take someone out of limitations. To break the barrier that is before them. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, marvelous Lord. In the name of Jesus. I want you to rise up as we pray unto the Lord. Jehovah, we worship you. Holy Spirit of God, we thank you. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, mighty God. For anyone watching or listening who are in despair, who have no hope, Father, we pray by the impartation of your word, let there be restoration of hope. Let there be restoration of hope. Let your Holy Spirit minister to their hearts. Give them wisdom. Wisdom understanding in the season they are right now. We pray your Holy Spirit to download upon them the wisdom to move 
beyond the limitations. The wisdom to move to the next level. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we proclaim your move of your spirit over all in this place and over all that are listening. In the name of Jesus. I want to pray before I go for somebody who said, Today, I've heard that there may be limitation in my life. That is why my testimony is not complete. I've heard that I need to give my life to Jesus Christ. And if you are such a person, you want to give your life, you want to rededicate your life, I want you to come out and I pray for you. I do not want to say, because I've been seeing you in this church, but you may need to rededicate your life. And if you are watching, you may need to give your life. You may need to rededicate your life. The Bible says, Jesus himself said, he says, abide in me and I abide in you. For no branch can grow fruit without the tree, the vine. And he said, without me, you can do nothing. And that's why there is no other option than to receive him to your life. In the name of Jesus. And so, Father, Lord, we thank you for that individual who is watching, who says, I receive you to my life. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. You are the Lord of my life. I submit everything before your feet this morning. I submit every of my fear to you that I may gain faith in Christ Jesus. I submit every of my worry, every of my worry, that I may gain freedom in Christ Jesus. Therefore, Lord God, we receive them this morning. We receive them this morning. Lord, receive them into your bosom. Receive them into the list of the names in the book of life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, marvelous Lord. Thank you for revisiting every family. Thank you for new encounter during this conference in our lives. Let us encounter you more than ever before. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray. Hallelujah. I believe it is well with you. Let's give Jesus a clap of free. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Have you been blessed? Amen. Are you ready for the rest of this conference? Are you ready? Yes. Amen. Let's share the grace and fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, the goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. We shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. May God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Please, we will not take much of our time. Just 20 minutes, we finish with the meetings. God bless you. He has died for you to remove condemnation from your life.